I beat every dungeon floor in Hypixel Skyblock completely solo. As a lot of you know, I'm quite a dungeons enjoyer, to the point that I'm the top Iron Man dungeons player. A week ago, I got the idea to solo every dungeon floor, because I saw they added solo dungeons as a feature on Alpha. I did this challenge on the main Hypixel server because of stability issues on Alpha. This means that on the side of the screen, it will show a dead teammate, but they left the dungeon before I even entered the boss fight, so it's still solo. Really quickly, before we get started, I'll ask any of you that aren't already subscribed and want to help me get to 35k to smack that subscribe button. I will say that all the clears for every dungeon floor, even including M7, are trivial, so I'll be leaving them out. The first floor that I'll be starting on is floor 1, as entrance doesn't have a standalone boss room. In this floor, the boss is Bonzo, a clown that fires balloons and summons undead. For all the floors, I'll be using my maxed out Necron's armor, a proper head for the floor, my maxed out Golden Dragon, and my Terminators. Using all this on Bonzo, we can see he never really stood a chance. Bonzo does actually have a trick up his sleeve where he resurrects, but he still gets minced. Let's move on to floor 2. Here we can find Scarf, another early game dungeon boss. Scarf summons 4 different minions in the first phase of his attack. His minions include a warrior, priest, archer, and mage. What they do is quite irrelevant for now as they all get one tapped. I actually didn't insta kill them as this introduces a longer dialogue wait time. Once all his minions are down, I'm free to one tap Scarf himself. The next floor in my challenge expedition is floor 3, which houses the Professor. This boss first has you fight 4 different guardians, each with unique abilities, kind of similar to the previous floor's minions. Once I kill them all, he will drop out of his barrier cage and attempt to try to fight me himself. Emphasis on attempt, he too, just like all the bosses and many bosses before him, gets one shot. For his final form, he'll merge with all the previous guardians and get one tapped again. Moving forward to floor 4, here resides Thorn. Thorn's mechanics are actually different from all the bosses before him. By this, I mean he can only be damaged by a spirit bow, which is dropped by spirit bears in the arena. What all that means is that sadly, I can't just insta-kill him like the other bosses. Let's get to killing his minions and spawning in the spirit bears. For the first two bears, this process went quite smoothly and he was already down to half of his health. Unfortunately, on the third one, I missed my bow shot, which made me think of a different plan on the spot. I decided to use my Terminator Salvation ability to stun him in place right as I got a spirit bow. As you can see, the strategy was extremely effective for the rest of the fight, and that's the end of Thorn. The fifth floor features Livid as its boss. Livid is also a bit different as he splits into many different versions of himself as soon as the fight starts, and he only dies if the real version of him dies. This can be found by looking up the ceiling of the boss room. I had a different tactic for this floor just for fun. Since I do extremely overkill levels of damage, I decided to just one-shot Livid clones until I got the right one. That was actually a quite satisfying process, and it also ended the boss fight. While we're on a hot streak, let's quickly move forward to floor 6. Here we can find Sedan, his giants, terracottas, and golems. The first thing that happens in this boss fight is that Sedan awakens his terracottas. You can either choose to wait them out or speed up the process by killing them. I chose to one tap all of them twice with the power of Soul Eater and Overkill stats. Next up are the giants. These also didn't stand a chance. They all died before touching the floor. I was a little bit confused though as to why I didn't one tap them, as I can usually do that easily. The last part of the boss was Sedan, whom I melted, but once again, I was confused why I didn't insta kill him like I remember being able to do. This was when at the end of the run, I decided to check my pet, and I realized I did the entire boss fight without any pet out, which means I lacked the crazy damage buff my golden dragon would have provided to me. The final floor of the normal catacombs is floor 7. This one will be the hardest normal floor to solo, not because of the amount of damage or tankiness I need, but because of the floor mechanics. The first boss on this floor is Maxor, a wither who simply needs to be led into a laser twice to be killed. This process was easy, other than that one time I ran out of mana. The hard part of this challenge is finally here. Storm is an easy boss to kill in terms of how much health he has and how much damage he deals. The main issue is getting him crushed under the pillar, as he cannot be damaged unless he's under the pillar. And this was the hardest part of the challenge by far, as I had to first clear as many wither skeletons as possible. This is so the summons wouldn't get distracted and wander off. 
Speaking of summons, I have to use a necromancy summon to distract Storm so I can solo pad. The previous times I've attempted this floor solo just for fun outside of this video, the process has been really annoying. This time though, it went really smoothly, and I was able to quickly kill Storm before he went to mid again in just two pillars. Goldor is just terminals, which was quite easy for me as someone with over 10,000 lifetime terminals solved across all of my floor 7 and M7 runs. I was able to nearly insta-kill him and move on to Necron. This part of the boss was just me firing arrows at Necron with no real thought whatsoever. This was the easiest part of Solo Floor 7. With that, Necron falls and the normal catacombs have been fully soloed. Moving on to master mode, the first few floors here should be trivial. The first master mode floor is M1. The boss fight for all the master mode floors are the same as normal floors in terms of mechanics, except for M7. This means in M1, Bonzo is unchanged except for his health and damage. I am still able to destroy him, but not one tap him like before. Next up is M2. Once again, the mechanics are the same, except for the small change of there being two type of each minion. I can simply kill them all, and then when Scarf drops, I'll kill some of his minions to make Scarf vulnerable. Finally, I can deal the finishing blow to Scarf. For the Master Mode variant of Floor 3, the way I deal with the boss is unchanged. Just pew pew all the Guardians, then the Professor, and then the Guardians again. The only change is that I don't one-shot them anymore, but the floor still goes by very quickly. I'm actually quite worried about what Solo M4 has in store for me. This is because not only does Thorn have 6 health instead of 4, but the mobs are actually lethal this time, especially the chickens. I'm also worried about the consequences of stunning Thorn with my Terminator. This is because once I let go of him, his speed will increase exponentially until he's flying around at Mach 10. To try to decrease the effects of this, I will not stun Thorn for the first two bows and just try to aim properly. Splitting up the bears in this situation is also really annoying. I have to do this because if the bears die at the same time, the run will softlock and I'll be stuck. During all of this, I also need to try to stay alive as the sheep and the chickens become increasingly more lethal as more of them stack up in the arena. Even while doing the scuff terminator stun strategy and at some times nearly dying, Thorn is finally dead and I can claim my victory over solo M4. After that tough fight with Thorn, I'm looking forward to a much simpler fight with Livid and M5. For this fight, all I need to do is dodge some arrows single out the correct livid, ice spray him, and kill him. This is one of the simplest, quote, difficult, unquote, challenges I've ever done on Skyblock. Moving swiftly onwards to M6, I'm worried about how we'll be able to complete this floor solo. This is because even on full team M6s, there's the occasional death to giants. I'm going to try to either use a bonzo mask or a spirit mask to try to cheat death. I'm also going to be using a Yeti for the Terras and swapping to a Golden Dragon when the Terras are dead. As soon as I enter the boss room, I will take out the Golems one at a time so they aren't a problem later on. From here, I will take out the Terracottas with relative ease. For the Giants, I placed decoys earlier which will hopefully increase my damage to them exponentially. To deal with Giants, I will swap back to my Damage Pet and put on a Spirit Mask. And there goes my Spirit Mask. I need to quickly swap to my Bonzo Mask before the invulnerability from the Spirit Mask runs out. Just like that, I barely squeeze past the giant's portion. Now for the last part of the boss, I'll have to fight Sedan, and he will lower all of his giants again, which is the actually scary part. And with that, I also barely killed Sedan. That's been one of the more stressful challenges on Skyblock I've ever done. The last floor is Master Mode Floor 7. Some of you might remember, I did a video on soloing this floor a while ago. If you want to see me solo the last dungeon floor and haven't already seen it, I'll link it in the top right of the screen and in the description down below. I'll leave you all some sneak peeks on screen right now, but I do apologize for the slightly worse video quality. That's all for this video, I hope all of you that stuck around to the end enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.